everyone welcome back to another episode of in the kitchen with sandy and today i don't have a i don't have a camera girl uh, she's decided to take a nap after school but that's okay i have some recipes i want to get out to you um, and as i told you in a previous video that you know there's going to be times where i would like to get a video out to you and i don't have um, someone to film this so i'm just going to do the best that i can do uh, we're on our own but that's okay this is an amazing video but today i am making or one of the recipes I'm making is a spaghetti squash bowl. Um, we're going to use some um, tomato sauce, um, the uh, spaghetti sauce um, on it, but it's we're going to serve it right in the nice little uh, shell of the spaghetti squash. Now, I got itchy. These are so amazing. They're so delicious, and I am going to show you how to prepare them. They're so easy, and today I'm making chicken and steak on the grill to go with mine. Um, and I'm also getting ready to do another video for you guys. It is um, asparagus and mushroom um, sauteed and like garlic and butter and olive oil. And, oh, that's amazing. But we'll get to that one next. All right, I've got my spaghetti squash here. Um, and normally people cut it this way. But instead of cutting it this way, because this is a very tough cookie to cut here. So I'm going to cut it this way and I, I'm going to show you exactly why because like I said we're going to use the outer portion of these as our spaghetti bowls. So I want you to be very careful because I know that you value your fingers and I value mine and like I said we're going to cut it right down the middle. So you just take it and hit your knife just a few times and you're going to go right down the middle. Um, and then in order for this to stand up you are going to have to take your knife here and cut that little, you've got to be careful, it's really hard to cut. Just kind of go around it. You know, sometimes it's, these things are dangerous, I'm telling you. There we go, cut it off. And see, it's going to sit perfect. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. And this one, you're going to do the same. Cut you just a little nub off the side of there. Watch the fingers see perfect it's gonna be absolutely perfect let me get a spoon because I have got to clean the innards out all right and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your spaghetti squash and you're just gonna clean the innards out just like you would if um, you know you're carving a pumpkin it's got all the seeds and um, the stringy uh, insides in there and you're just gonna scrape every bit of that out Okay, and once you have all of the innards scraped out, look at that, that's perfect. Um, what I want you to do is, oh, I, I forgot to tell you, you need to preheat your oven um, to about 375, and these are gonna roast for a good um, 45 minutes. Um, go ahead and place them upright because we are gonna go ahead and put a little bit of seasoning in them. We're gonna add just a little bit of garlic salt because it's gonna go ahead and start flavoring your spaghetti squash. It's gonna have that flavor, plus it's gonna smell amazing in your house. And you know, that's what it's all about. Who needs air fresheners when you can just cook all day? And then what you're gonna do next is, all you're gonna need is some water. You're gonna turn these upside down into your roasting pan. You just need like a shallow roasting pan. I like to use the ones that you get like, like these from the dollar store. They're cheap and you can just throw them in the trash. Gotta move your big knife over there. And as you can see, they are um, down. Don't worry, all of that garlic salt is not gonna fall to the bottom, I, pro I promise you. And then you're gonna add just enough water just to come just up over it a little bit. And this is gonna kind of help steam your, oh, my table is cockeyed, look at it. Just to steam your um, spaghetti squash. You're probably gonna need about a cup and a half, and that's how, that's it, look at that. That's about all you're gonna need. We're gonna pop this in a preheated oven um, for about 45 minutes. Okay, hey, because you never know what's gonna happen within the kitchen with Sandy. I told you I'm gonna put different variety of videos out there. Um, I started off with, um, as you see in the intro, that my spaghetti squash is in the oven. I've got that in the oven, but guess what? I've decided to do the whole my whole dinner with you guys. So. This is going to be a little bit longer video, but I hope you enjoy it. What else I'm cooking with, um, the, and let me know if you like this type of video. I'd be more than happy to do these kind of videos for you. Got the, um, the glasses on because I'm going to be doing some chopping and I don't want to lose any fingers. 
Again, my spaghetti squash is in the oven, and today my menu is um, the spaghetti squash with my pasta sauce, and I've got um, some mushrooms, and I've got some whole mushrooms here. Look at this, they've already been washed and dried. And you know what, it's so nice and sunny outside, and the wind is nice and blowing. I wash these, you know, just with a wet, uh, damp uh, paper towel, just kind of washed them off a little bit. And my asparagus, yeah, it's on a paper plate, so, do not judge. It's my asparagus. See that? It's beautiful. It's a little big for my taste, but it's what my grocery store had. But I placed it in front of my window and it blew it dry because you want to start uh, your asparagus and your mushrooms, which I'm going to cook together in a beautiful uh, garlicky. I'm trying to get my camera fixed here. I told you I don't have um, anybody to film today, so it is what it is. Um, but I'm going to cook this in a uh, nice, beautiful, no, we're cockeyed, oh hell. <laughs> And we're going to cook this in a nice, beautiful olive oil and butter and garlic sauce. It's going to be amazing. If you can see, I've already started chopping my garlic. I've got about uh, two nice big cloves here. And you just uh, want to take your nice, your nice, your knife like roughly through it. And then you're just going to take your mushrooms. And I'm just going to cut my mushrooms right in half. That's the way I like my mushrooms when I'm sauteing them with the... Um, asparagus okay to my pan um, I've added my olive oil little technical difficulties there um, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my butter as well put your pat of butter right in there we're just gonna saute this up this is gonna be a very quick process um, add your garlic and we're just going to infuse that oil with that beautiful, beautiful garlic. And we're going to give that a stir. Oh, we've got a piece of garlic wrapping in there. Um, just give that a nice stir. You want to do this on about um, medium heat. And it looks like a lot of oil and butter, but it's really not. You got about um, a two tablespoons of the olive oil and uh, two tablespoons of butter because you're going to want your, this is going to create such a beautiful, um, rich flavor for your mushrooms and your um, asparagus. Now this is a fairly quick process, like I said, so we're going to go ahead and throw our mushrooms in there. Oh, I'm gonna have one. Mm, I love raw mushrooms. I'm gonna take that just a little bit. Put those all nice and well. Oh, I can smell my spaghetti squash um, cooking as we speak. I can smell the garlic in that. I love to cook with garlic, and I know that you guys know that because you, if you watch a lot of my videos, that's that's what everything I, I use it for everything. Um, and go ahead and throw your asparagus in there. Oh, this is such a beautiful, healthy, healthy dish. Now, my asparagus is a little big. It's not my choice. Um, give me a minute here. Um, you know, as far as the grocery store, I like it a little bit smaller, but hey, it is what it is. It, it's spring and, um, you know, these good things come from different places like Florida and different parts of the warmer states, so you know, they might not be locally grown, but they're delicious. Go ahead and take your garlic and your red pepper flakes and just sprinkle this right on top. And some people ask, well, why do you use fresh garlic and garlic salt? And I'm going to tell you why. Because I like my food to have flavor. I don't like bland food. I've never liked bland food. My mother was and still is one of the best cooks there is. Are you getting a look at this? Are you getting a look at this? This is absolutely amazing. We're just going to stir fry this um, for uh, maybe about uh, four minutes, four or five minutes, until everything is um, nice and flavorful and it's all coated with those, um, the beautifulness of the olive oil and the butter oh, and the garlic. I don't want it to be mush, but I want it to be have a nice um, crunch to it. 
Let's get down in that pan. Let's get down in there. Can you see that, how beautiful that is? It is absolutely amazing. Give it a nice toss. And you're gonna let this go. You're, you really don't wanna disturb it a whole lot, but make sure you get it coated nicely with all that um, butter and olive oil. And oh my gosh, it's gonna be so amazing. So amazing. So we're gonna let this go for um, about four minutes. And that's it, that's all. I gotta have me a mushroom. Oh, Jesus. Mmm. I love vegetables. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Okay, we are ready to prepare our steaks for the grill. In here, I've got a little bit of um, seasoned uh, salt and a little bit of garlic um, um, salt. What I'm going to do is, and it's got a little bit of garlic powder in there as well. What I want you to do is go ahead and sprinkle that um, generously on uh, both sides. These are delicious, delicious. Um, and again, my steaks have, um, they've set out room temperature for about an hour before you grill them. You, that is so important, guys. I cannot tell you how important that is, that your steaks become room temperature. Um, even if you're frying them, how, it doesn't matter how you make them, it's very important that they become room temperature. These are absolutely beautiful. Now these still have the, these are the strip steaks and they still have the bone on them, which, you know, I prefer them without the bone, but with the bone makes for, uh, it just so much flavor. I just prefer cooking them with no bone. If you want to take a knife right down the edge there and, um, you know, cut those bones off, that's perfectly fine. It's just one big bone there. Season those well. Um, you want to make sure your grill is nice and hot um, too. And then we're also going to start on our chicken. I've, like I said, I've already pre-cut that. I stuck it in the freezer for just a little bit, um, probably about 30 minutes. Now, oh, these are going to just sit and the flavors are going to marry. Now, let me show you what I'm going to do with my chicken. And I want you to look at this. My asparagus and my mushrooms are done to perfection. These are, I these are still nice they're, they're tender enough to eat to pop in your mouth but they're also they still have a nice little crunch to them oh i love this you're gonna love this i promise now what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take your chicken and i'm gonna show you what i mean by um slicing that and i'm gonna take me a nice big bowl here and then i'm using the same it's okay this is um was used on the steaks but it's quite all right now what i've done is i took my chicken breast and as you can see, I, I sliced them, I sliced them um, kind of thinly. Um, I took one chicken breast and was able to make two pieces out of it. Um, I like to do that, um, number one, because it cooks quicker on the grill and, um, you know, very quick cooking time and, you know, less, less time for it to burn on the outside and not cook on the inside. Uh, and plus they make nice um, pieces there. You can take one piece of, um, three pieces of chicken and make six pieces with it. This is two packs, so I have 12 pieces of chicken, but that's okay. I'm cooking ahead today, uh, um, you know, for the week. So that's, it's just much easier to do like that. So, and if you're trying to watch your carbs, then, you know, this is a perfect idea for you. You can just go grab a piece of chicken and in the refrigerator and oh my goodness, that's just, that's my that's my thing I like to do. I like to have stuff on hand. It makes it makes eating healthy a little bit easier, you know. You don't have to go grab a Hershey bar or whatever. Um, and to this, I like to add. Let's move the camera a little bit. Hope you can see this. Hope it's not too far down. Let's try to fix the camera. You got to work with me, people. I'm trying to get these recipes out there. I don't want to hear no bitching and complaining. You hear me? Got it? Uh, there. Perfect. Now, to my chicken here, I like to add my favorite seasonings before they go out on the grill and just pour it right in there, liberally. Um, this is onion powder. Like I said, liberally, because you're going to want to coat every single one of those chicken breasts. And then we're going to use some garlic powder. Oh my goodness. I gotta grab some more garlic powder. And 
then you're gonna use just a little bit of seasoned salt. Oh gosh, this is my favorite go-to recipe for grilled chicken on the grill. Oh, just a little bit of that. And you're gonna take your chicken and toss it. And you're gonna coat each and every one of those pieces with that um, wonderful seasoning. Okay, I want you to look at my steaks and my chicken. It looks absolutely amazing. I put it on the grill. It's been on there for um, about uh, six or seven minutes. Take a look at it. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the rest of the chicken and um, my, let me get my hair out of my mouth, my um, spaghetti sauce, so my spaghetti squash is done perfectly. Now you wanna make sure that you do not overcook your chicken or your steak. I mean, it's so easy to do. You don't wanna do that because you want it to be nice and tender. And I'm gonna show you a way to tell if your chicken is done. You take your um, a knife and just kind of pierce down in it. If it goes in there um, easily and does not meet resistance, then that chicken is done. And I want you to take a look at them. Look how amazing they look. Look at that. And this chicken is absolutely amazing. I'm telling you, it is so good. I'm going to try to get a bite of it here. Mmm. Oh, it's perfect. It's on point. All right, I'm going to show you what to do with my spaghetti squash. Look, it's cooked perfectly done. It roasted in the oven um, with the water for... Um, about 45 50 minutes and I want you to look at that look it looks just like spaghetti and this is a great alternative for low carb um, pasta of course it doesn't replace it and my camera's falling over there how about that now um, just go ahead and just kind of loosen those strands up there look how much it looks like spaghetti and then what I like to do is take a little bit of butter And just put it right in there and just mix it around. And I like to top mine with a little bit of garlic, even though we added garlic um, in the cooking process. And then you're gonna add your sauce. Just right over top of that. You've got a nice little spaghetti bowl. And your grated Parmesan cheese. Look in there. Look at that. And then your grated Parmesan cheese. Magnificent. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Okay, I've got my, um, my little spaghetti bowl here. And I'm going to take my asparagus and mushrooms. The husband doesn't like mushrooms. He don't know what he's missing. Just put that right on your plate. Oh, isn't that, that is just absolutely divine. And if you notice, there's not um, as much of the asparagus and mushrooms. It's because I've been snacking on it. I've been snacking on it. All right, and then we're gonna take a steak. Look how amazing these are. Perfect steak and some chicken. Voila. What you think about that? Now, I want you to look at this beautiful picture. Look at that. Such an easy, easy meal to prepare. It's very healthy, low carb, and your family will love it. So, I hope you enjoy this video. And if you'd like to see more videos of me doing complete meals, I'd be happy to um, show them. Um, to you or um, do a few more videos like that. You're going to have to get a load of this picture again. Make sure you give me um, a thumbs up, subscribe, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram. Um, I'm on Snapchat. And don't forget to log on to my site in the kitchen with sandy.com where you can get um, this recipe and many others and I appreciate you watching and I love you all so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.